Oh my god! Bee pheromone, their alarm pheromone smells like bananas. So if you're ever next to a beehive and you smell bananas, Run. go. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Adrian, and I'm the bearded beekeeper. I'm out here every single day trying to save these bees because our ecosystem depends on it. Grabbing a clump of girls, like so. You have to bring them on up and we'll just deposit them on in there. Honeybees are pollinators, which is essential, not just for us, but for everything you see around you. And it's imperative that we really stay on top of these colonies and get them working to make sure that we have pollinators that we need in order to go pollinate the foods and the crops that we use and eat as humans. This hive can kill you. It is not a joke. You can go up to a box like this if you do not know what you are doing and in a heartbeat, you could have thousands of stinging insects all over you. Not pretty. Hi, I'm Travis. I travel the world producing incredible stories. The world is full of unique people, places, and animals. And it's my goal to make compelling videos that show that. Follow me on this journey to uncover amazing stories from around the world. And don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to iWonder TV. What's up, bud? My buddy Travis. Travis, Jovan. What's up, buddy? Sir. Okay, well, I'm glad to see you, boys. So I got a call from my buddy Joe. Um, he's a pest control operator, and he gives me a shout every once in a while that he comes across a colony that can be saved. Um, and man, he found a beautiful one today, so I'm really excited to get out there and get at it and bring that colony home. Oh my God. Look how beautiful that hive is, man. Bro, this thing is massive. I couldn't kill it. How old do you think the hive is? I would say this hive is somewhere around eight months old. That's it? Yeah. Crazy. They work so fast, man. Oh, look at all that beautiful new comb. My most important tool that I use is probably my bee smoker. Every single time that you are operating these colonies, you have to come up to them understanding that you're dealing with a social, multi-organism living thing that is talking. And they do it through smell. So the smoke comes in and you can't use much because it'll choke them out. You just gotta come in, introduce a little bit of that smoke to them, and that disables communication for a short period of time, allowing us as beekeepers to get into the colony, cut out the comb or inspect, do whatever we need to do. But the reason it works is because the smoke overpowers the odor of the pheromones that are being produced, and all the bee smell is smoke. All right, here we go. See, they're actually on my face already because they're picking up on the breath, like my, the smell of my, watch. Oh. The carbon that you're releasing. Very good. I like to do the vacuum when we're cutting out of structures or even a beehive that's up in the tree. The reason why that is, is bees have a habit of when they leave the colony and come back, they want to go back to where the hive originally was. So what we do is we remove them into an enclosure with a vacuum where we get to suck them out of a tree or out of their hive and put them into an enclosed box where they can't leave. So it's a really awesome tool when used properly. And the best way to check is you'll all get all your blasts will come in, so you'll have a big accumulation. So what I want to do is I want to see how many high, you know, and that's, that's how I could tell how much I got, what I got. So from here, we'll just go ahead and start. Start sniffing. So we'll get this first panel off. This looks good, actually. So this is all nectar. No, no, these are, these are good. These are all nectar. This is actually honey right here. Check this out. It's all honey. And on the other side, you got a little bit of honey stores right here as well. So if you want to taste it, right here. What? Right here, check that out. Do I'm gonna do it through my suit. Oh yeah, it's totally fine. Mm. I'm just trying to learn to save the bees. I like my mangoes. I like my fruits. 
So I know we need bees to have that and I want to continue to enjoy that. And I absolutely did not want to exterminate them. Um, so what I did, I actually took a pay cut and I'm giving my earnings to my brother to learn. Um, I see it as going to school. He went to school, he paid a bunch of money for school. <laughs> so I'm getting it cheaper on a discounted price um, and we're able to save some bees. Perfect. Well done. Can we save this and, and drain the honey? I wouldn't. Okay. There's a little bit, but not enough for it to be um, worth it. So what happens is if you process a panel like that that has a lot more nectar and it has honey, your moisture content is too high. Therefore, you're now mixing sugar with water and that'll begin to ferment. It, this, stuff, this stuff is so deep, mm -hmm. it's really ridiculous. Yeah, man. Really ridiculous. Honey is antimicrobial, antibacterial, um, and crazy enough, man, you go to some other parts of the world, honey's even looked at as a medicine. Let's talk about Manuka. Manuka honey is a honey that comes from the Manuka plant or tree, and it produces this type of honey that is now known as Manuka honey, which has anti, also antimicrobial and antibacterial properties. In Australia, which is where this honey comes from, it's actually used to treat burns, cuts, and all sorts of other strange ailments on the skin because of the high antimicrobial and antibacterial properties they have. Um, it is literally used as medicine. Nice and slow, bro. I got you here. After we finish removing all those combs and we get everything down, we'll go ahead and try to cut down a portion of that limb. Reason we do that here is because um, the bees that are on these branches are hanging from the branch. They're secreting and releasing pheromones into that wood. And it being so porous, it absorbs it. And now what will end up happening is if we remove all of those bees and don't cut off that portion of the limb, all those pheromones and those wax bits are left behind. And that customer could potentially have another problem in the future because of that. We're done. Now it's just cleaning up, get these bees in a safe location, tidy up our work zone and get rid of the rest of this wax. And then we can go ahead and back up the rest of the bees after they go ahead and uh, settle down again. So uh, one of the big things down here, um, Man, we have a water meter at every single house. And for some reason, that perfect little rectangular space provides an excellent living space for honeybees. Um, my probably most removed colonies come from water meters because they're literally everywhere. All right, here we go, big reveal. So when we're dealing with these water meters, um, I like to take a little bit different of approach. It's actually the original initial approach I learned when I first became a beekeeper almost eight years ago. Um, I use just traditional tools like a knife and my smoker. And then I bring my little box, I'll set it up next to them and I'll go ahead and remove those lids and I remove all of that comb and I try to save what I can in order to get the bees to have a more comfortable, somewhat established living space. All right, we're gonna actually shake these bees into this box. Believe it or not, almost all the bees that you see inside that colony are females. So, girl power. I tell my daughter every day, girls rule the world. You know, we'd be pretty stuck without all these girls that we help maintain and keep healthy. These bees, help sustain us and it's it's awesome to be able to to see all of it it's important to find the queen because um it does help with uh ensuring that you did get the job completed um if you don't get the queen it's not the biggest deal the only problem is is you could have um bees that are potentially left behind and you can go ahead and uh like almost get a reestablished colony and if you actually come around here real quick you'll actually see the march. They'll start, they're, they're actually gonna start marching in to the box here shortly, because um, there's bees moving into the box. And we'll flush out a couple of them. 
but you'll see they'll start congregating around and then they'll start making a run for inside of the box. The queen is, you know, it's a wildly incredible thing. Um, you have this individual insect inside of these boxes laying anywhere from 1500 to 2500 eggs a day. While she's doing this, she's also secreting pheromones. The reason she's doing that is she is establishing her presence inside of that colony and that is imperative. If you don't have a queen that's producing solid pheromones, the bees will take note of that. And um, they'll actually, wildly enough, they'll put that queen down and they will make another queen from one of the freshly laid eggs that the queen has just laid. And they'll generate a new queen from that because she's not producing up to par with is what is required of the colony. I'm probably not gonna save this one, but something really cool, if I could get this off in time, there's actually a bee being born right here, and I want to see if I can get you a video. There's a bunch of bees on the other side, so um, it'll be a little difficult, but right here, there's actually a bee being born. Look, it just rolled off the last little bit of wax, cutting itself out. There's a bee coming around there. Go ahead and set that right here. I'm actually getting buzzed pretty hard. So as I continue to do more and more work with the honeybees, you realize how gentle they are and how you know enjoyable it can be to actually work with them. And you know, despite it being somewhat efficient and moving bees from a location um, physically by hand. Uh, it, it's just something impactful that shows other individuals how something that is looked at so uh, aggressively or something that's so dangerous and be able to show, you know, how humbling and peaceful they can be. And there's the queen. The queen's right here. She went inside the box, which is what we want. So that's good. So we know she's in there. But we'll go ahead and um, it's just grabbing a clump of girls, like so. You have to bring them on up and we'll just deposit them on in there. But you gotta be real gentle when you're doing this because they really can pop you, it's not a joke. When I'm done with all these removals throughout the day um, and I get home to the office at the end of the day, I back my truck into the backyard and I'll start unloading all of my colonies into that little holding area that we are in. Where is a location that I can monitor those colonies from a close distance and uh, be able to see how they're doing and be able to set them up to relocate them again to one of our other sites when they're ready. So uh, one of the hives we brought home today um, as to what I believed uh, didn't have a queen. Um, I set the box right up next to it. And now it looks like all the bees from this box have left and have decided to join this birdhouse right here. Seems about right. There seems to be somewhere between five to 8,000 honeybees hanging out on the outside here. That's just a big old clump of bees hanging out over here. This hive can kill you. It is not a joke. You can go up to a box like this if you do not know what you are doing and are not ready to work with these insects or wearing protective gear. You can piss off a box like this and in a heartbeat, you could have thousands of stinging insects all over you. Not pretty. I wanna say, man, what draws me um, to work with these honeybees and one of the things I, I, I just love is um, that drive a colony has in order to survive. As human beings, if we were to take note as to how these insects that we look down upon operate, like, I mean, you could literally write a textbook as to how we should be treating each other, how we should be working. And I mean, it doesn't have to go down to like the very, like crossing all the T's and dotting all your I's, but you know, if a bunch of insects can work together from different genetic gene pools in one solid functioning piece, like we should be able to do the same as humans.